Hi, I'm Michael O'Donovan, and this is The Wedding Show. In tonight's episode, we get tips and advice from menswear and lots of other manly stuff as well. Joining me tonight, we have Desi Flynn from Lavin's Menswear in Ballymote. Hi, Hello. Desi, how are you? Hello, how are you, Mike? Lean into that microphone there now. So Hello, the Michael, how are you? I'm very well. And we have Jared Fitzgerald from Jared Anthony's Menswear Superstore in Carrick on Channel. Jared, Thank welcome. You. Thank you very much for having me. Excellent stuff. Now, just to give you an idea, we've got Richard McCarthy on social media. He's over there somewhere, the other end of the table. And Brian McDermott is over in the corner there on uh, production. To get involved in the conversation, simply leave any comments or questions in the comment section below. And or you can private message us, email us at myweddingstore.ie or call into us here in Calooney in County Sligo. This show is brought to you in association with My Wedding Store. My Wedding Store, in case you didn't know, is a one-stop shop for all your wedding needs. And for more information, check out myweddingstore.ie, incorporating retail, hire, and other wedding services. If you'd like to sponsor an episode or prize or giveaway, then let us know privately and we'll take care of everything else. Now, lads, we're going to get started. Desi, I'm going to come to you first. Perfect. All right. Talk to me what happens when a couple comes in. Well, generally, you can either get people that will ring or that will just walk in off the street. Either way, we either make an appointment or, as I said, they walk in. Uh, they look for our dress hire department. They'll be shown to it. And then myself, if it was myself personally that they were dealing with, I will talk them through what selection of stuff we have. And is it, is it generally couples or is it the groom that... Comes in first. Um, ninety-five percent of the time, it'll be couples that will come in. Okay. So, would there be a river, a woman around to let a man come in on his own okay. to pick everything? So, Jared, would you agree with that? That it's couples. It generally is couples, but generally the first contact is the male the guy, ring, the groom ringing the shop to see either to make an appointment or the couple who walk in. Okay. And if they just walk in, we give them a general overview of the the range of stuff that's available. But right. we would ask them to come back for an appointment. You prefer the appointment. Why, why so? Because I do think you need one full hour of dedicated, a one-to-one, where we tease out what actually you like, what you don't like, what's going to look good on you, what's not going to look good on you. Okay. And at the end of that hour, you can go off with, putting, with your tail between your legs, whether you're happy or not, and decide or to go with that shop or with, not. With a load of information, a load You'd of choices be, to make. That's exactly. Well, you generally would have the choices rattled down as to what's the best part at that stage. At that stage, yeah, okay. You okay, generally okay. would. But we'd prefer to make the appointment in the morning time when people are more alert, uh, okay. more subjected to new ideas and new concepts. Okay. And that we also have a better light coming into the store in the morning. So the groom should look at what, what they're going to wear in daylight rather than in artificial light. And Desi, let me ask you, how far in advance should a couple look to look at their suits, the, the groom's suits and whatnot? Um, the wooden, well, there's no really set time. Ideally, I suppose, a minimum you would like to have two months, have everything kind of booked and picked and all that two months before the wedding. But some people are very much organised and there might be six months in right, advance, okay. you know, but generally it can be... Um, like I've I've had a lean, wedding. Lean, lean in, don't be afraid of that microphone. I have done. I have organised weddings that they maybe came in maybe a month before their wedding to pick out the suits and that. Fair enough, the pressure is on to get them all sorts and that. But so so what happens? What happens? Jared, a fella comes in with 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 herself and they settle on a style or a suit or whatever. And 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 uh, it's a uh, six months out. Do you measure him then, or or what? And 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 he and he's going to say he turns around with the best will in the world, and he says, "I'm going to the gym. I'm going running. I'm, I'm going to lose, you know, a stone and a half before the wedding." The, the well, generally, she says he's going well, to lose yeah. a stone and a half. <laughs> yeah, but she's going to get him out walking and all the rest. Sometimes it happens, but most times it doesn't happen. That the, the weight is lost. But, right. Okay. Um, six to eight weeks is the average booking time before a wedding but it varies depending especially with the diaspora of Australia and Canada people come home when they're on holidays at Christmas time they might be booking the wedding for the week so, year so afterwards you, you, you brought it up there now so I'm going to jump right in and ask the question what happens when a fella is the groomsman the best man yeah. he's working in Australia you know Johnny I want you to be the best man oh great Ooh. speech yeah the whole lot what happens how do, how do you measure for that and he's not coming home till three days before the wedding 
Well, we generally we ask them to go into a store in Australia and get measurements there. Although to and are they the same measurements? No, no. We have to decipher Calculate from Calculate out. And yeah. Australians tend to measure, the, and, uh, and Americans tend to measure their waist from the outside of the leg down to the, down to the bottom of the leg. Right. Whereas we always use an inside leg measurement. Um, there's the point in which they take the shoulder measurements. The sleeve is slightly different. So we'd have it there or thereabouts, but because we'd be doing final fitting, we can tweak and closer to the time but we'd have made provision for that size okay does it what would the final fitting what does that entail well i was kind of just the, referring back the, to it's, sorry uh, <laughs> referring back to george's previous comment on uh, that the americans do measure a bit different if it was myself that was i would recommend the groom to tell his groomsman or you know to, to be that uh, just to tell them that i would like to measure them from the inside leg down or from where about on the shoulder as well and they're generally in centimeters aren't they uh, Australian are in centimetres yeah, yeah in centimetres yeah. I would come whereas I would generally deal in inches yeah you know but anyways we, just, <laughs> we can flick a tape the tell you can so flick it around the slide rule will come out yeah. all of but you can see why information can get uh, mangled up in translation but an email from, or a text from a uh, best man would work on What that. about a photograph? Is it, is it useful if they send you a photograph? <laughs> <laughs> Not one from taking, you know, they're out on the beer or having, on the beach or having a great time or whatever. But, it, you know, a standard... It can be, yeah. Photograph, it's not necessary. Right. Generally, no. the two of us would have loads of stock in place and we'd, we'd well be able to cater for any situation. If and and you've got tailors... Uh, you would be able to work with that would be able to take it in or you know loosen it up or whatever as long as you have a ballpark size scale kind of around you'll be able to do fine tweaks then okay okay. but if you know if if the groomsman comes in and he's 56 regular which is not a normal size right it wouldn't be a regular stock item it, that'd be tight going now. You need a couple that'd of That'd be days. a big man now, wouldn't it? 56? Yeah, that'd be slightly bigger than myself. Right, okay. But generally, we'd, I'd always ask a question is there any unusual sizes? Oh, right, okay. We were talking yeah. earlier about a fellow who's six foot six yeah. or something like that. <laughs> you know, that's, that, that'd be an unusual size, height of a man. No, well, I've, I've, I've mentioned earlier on, we had a, uh, an airline pilot from Texas who's six foot six, and all his groomsmen are six foot six. How many groomsmen did he have? Six groomsmen six and himself. <laughs> And, six and his bride is a pilot as well. And how tall is she? Any idea? Oh, no, she's <laughs> she's just a nice petite, uh, five foot seven. All right, okay, <laughs> still very good. All right then. Um, how do you figure out then what the bride and the groom are looking for when they do come in to the appointment? Does that go to you first? Well, it's just uh, by general, just asking the question. Uh, had there any ideas of colours or style of jackets? Like there's some there's. Uh, three different styles there's your there's your normal jacket there's your tails there's your casino which is kind of a three quarter length jacket so you just kind of ask them the questions and you get a feel for what they're thinking of and then you just try and start to show them just different options right okay and just taking your time and going through every option okay and, and Jared, for for different size men then different size grooms is there different s- styles that you r- recommend or can any suit fit any man uh, not well any suit can be made to fit any man, whether it actually suits them is another thing. Right. Uh, you would actually, the, the first thing you would do is actually assess the groom. The most important person to get right on that day is the groom, apart from the bride, obviously, is the groom. So you look at his colour scheme. Has he got dark eyebrows? Has he got pale skin? Has he got a tan? Red hair. Well, red hair is one issue, but not a big issue. Uh, but uh, you get a feel for what colours are good for him. Say a, a white, pale-faced man... Black tends to draw, make them more, look worse. Right. So a, a softer colour, like a navy or a blue, is better. Okay. So if if you know by assessing, by looking at the groom there, as to what is the best colour in them. But you have to tease out from the bride as to what their colour palette is for the, for the wedding itself. So and does, does that affect the actual colour of the suit? Or does it just affect the waistcoat or the, you know, the, the tie or whatever he's wearing? It would it would have, it would have effect on on the overall color of the of the the grooms, um, like it's it's difficult to put a navy suit say if the bridesmaids are black, mm. you know that's a hard one to do. Right. Black is probably a better color, or a grey is much better with it. Right. Uh, grey was very popular for a few years. Grey is coming back. Yeah. What's what's popular at the moment? <coughs> We I suppose your your kind of petrol blues and French navies are still there, but you can you can definitely see a bit more grey coming back into it again. 
Okay. Would you agree with that, Jared? Well, I think people are tired. We've had four full seasons of navies and mm. blues, and right. people are looking for something fresh. But what's trending now is the groom tends to be using the opportunity to buy a suit for himself. That was yeah. That was one of the questions I yeah. had, yeah. and and. Is is that popular that the groom buys the suit? Would you recommend that? Well, I think you'd agree. I mean, it, it's trending. We follow what the groom wants, uh, but it, it seems to be trending more that it definitely has got more popular. Yes. Yeah. So uh, now let, let me ask the question: The groom goes to buy his suit. Then he rents the other lad's suit. But what kind of a suit does the groom buy? Jared, I go to you for that as first one. The one buzzword that's used in wedding hire is fitted. The suit has to be a fitted suit, uh, especially on the slimmer guys. Everybody wants to have their figure accentuated so that you have a tapered suit. So the, that's the key word. Not, not off the, the rack as the, oh, well, the rail. See, you will get that in good, mm. good cut suits. You will get that slim tapered fit. Right, but uh, for, a slim, for a slim fella. Yes. But a fella, you know, big and bulky like me now, you'd, you'd want definitely fitted, I presume. Well, you, you would, we would carry fitted and we'd carry tapered and we'd carry a regular fit. So right. you'd have the same fabric in three different fits. Yes. Yeah, because I mean, there's I'm opportunities there where, where you're tugging out the whole guy. And one guy is 20 stone, one guy is only 14. When you, when you say fitted now, is that tight? It, it's fitted that is not baggy and is not, that's showing a shape and a silhouette to the chap. Right. Not, uh, like fitted for a big guy could be a tapered fit suit. Fitted for a slim guy could be a, a very slim, super slim fit suit. Right. Okay. So you just you, uh, you try and enhance the body shape. But fitted wouldn't mean that if you know if he's, if oh, he's wouldn't be the YMCA up. at the end of the night he doesn't rip <laughs> the sleeves out of the suit or anything daft. Well, as long as he's able to do the hokey pokey later on. As he has <laughs> the hokey pokey, but there is, he does have movement. Oh yes. Oh yes. He will. Yeah. It just gives you a fitted look, something that doesn't look baggy on you. Mm -hmm. Right. Not too much material in the front yeah. or things yeah. like that, but just that it looks fitted. Okay. okay. Looks well. All right. Okay. Um, and then the the, the style wise, what's uh, style is in fashion or what's coming into fashion? You, you go on buying trips, I presume, so you'd see trends coming down the track six to nine, 18 months down the road, I presume. I yeah. think I have noticed myself now with the uh, um, jackets, even though it's a regular, I've started to come slightly shorter than in, when you say short, regular, long, it does affect the length of your jacket. <coughs> But a regular jacket that used to come maybe six inches below your waist is maybe only coming four inches now below your waist. So are we, are we possibly heading towards a 60s style look? I think everything comes full circle. And we actually have swung back to the 60s. It's certainly a, like a Beatles look. Yeah. Um, the ladies like, like to see the cheek of the ass in the suit. For <laughs> <laughs> the, it used to be uh, the tail, your tail, your back of your jacket covered your your your, your bum. Your posterior. But now yeah. they like to see a little cheek, and uh, that's one of the issues that uh, we would ask: Does your, does my bum look good in this? Does my <laughs> bum look good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, who decides then? Who who decides what the groom should wear? Is it primarily the groom, or is it primarily the bride? Or, or, you know, God forbid, you know, the mother-in-law gets involved. Or, you uh -huh. know. <laughs> that, that could be, that's going down another... Uh, no, but I'm asking the question, like, I mean, should the bride and groom decide between them? I, I suspect so. Or should it be the groom's choice on what style? I mean... They both, I think, have their own ideas, but as long as if the... I think the groom is happier in the suit if the bride likes it as well. Right, okay. So I think uh, the... Bride, I think, does pick the suit. My answer to that would be, everybody coming through the door is different. Mm. And you get guys who are very discerning and know exactly what they want and how they want to be portrayed. And you'll find that that guy is more definite on how he wants to look. He makes more of the decision and she's got to be happy with it. Right. But as a general rule, we'd say the bride gets what she wants, but the groom's got to be comfortable in it. That's a general rule. Okay, okay. But it's, it's mixed bag. All right, okay. Okay. Um, before you mentioned something there about, about uh, mothers of the bride. Yes. <laughs> well, now, um, we kindly ask that only two people would attend the appointment because we believe it's their day. It's a special day. Yes. And only they should have the opportunity of picking out and shouldn't be influenced by outside circumstances. I agree with that, actually. I've seen guys come along, a groom come along with five groomsmen and nobody could decide 
It can lead to confusion. Nothing it works out with a committee. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay. Definitely okay. not. I'm going to go to Richard because he's waving and flapping his arms over there. <laughs> I put my hand up once and I get criticised. It's terrible. So you were saying two people, so that's basically the mother of the groom and the bride. Okay. I didn't putting words in my is mouth. Is there anybody watching us, Richard? Anybody listening to us? We have loads us? of people Any watching. questions coming uh, in? Though? We have a couple of questions coming in. Okay. Uh, so remember, just, folks, just, as well. Just, yeah, go on, go ahead. Can I talk? Yeah, thanks. So uh, remember, guys, to uh, tag a groom and um, you're in with a chance to win a 100 euro voucher from each store. Um, I also just mention as well which store you prefer the voucher from. Uh, there could be a war on going on here now. But, um, so, but uh, yeah, we have uh, Michelle Baxter giving a shout out to Jared there. Uh, saying well done to Jared Anthony's. Um, Wait, did, did you win something? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe Michelle and her husband got their outfits. They must have, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Michelle, yeah. blonde girl, lovely girl. Yeah. Um, and I have one of my brides, actually, Ailish McHugh. Um, I think Ailish is, is uh, viewing us from London as well. Oh, so excellent. Hi, Ailish. How are you? Um, so a uh, question from Ailish was, would you recommend hiring or buying suits? Well, we can kind we of... take that? Um, I, it all depends on budget, really. But I suppose if the store is offering a good value on buying a suit, I think buying a suit could be the way to go. For my own, I would also could do, I'd recommend that it would be a present for the groomsmen. You might go off and pay a certain amount of money to rent a suit and still buy them something on top of that as a present to say thank you for, for being part of the wedding day. I understand, and yeah. And something that, you wouldn't know, it all depends what you buy, but they might never use it again. The, old hip, the old hip flask is popular. Hip flask, that's it, yeah. But or the whereas pocket watch. If you were to buy a suit and give them that as a present to keep again, that's a very good present to be given somebody. It's, it's, it's so long something as there that wasn't a big difference in the yeah, price. Yeah. What about you, Gerald? Would you... I would say it depends on the budget exactly. You hit on the nail there. Uh, the average price of hiring a suit is somewhere between 100 120 okay. and you can buy a suit for 200 Right. So when you weigh it up, what I wouldn't compromise on is if you're going to buy a suit, I wouldn't buy a 200 euro suit for getting married in. I would pay that a little bit more to get the cut right. What sort of money would you be talking about? Ballpark. Well, at least 300 Right. Just to get the cut right, to get the shape right. And it all depends on the, on the body of the person as well. So... I don't think a 200 euros, well, they may feel comfortable in a 200 euro suit, but other people will recognise the difference. Right. Okay. So, but do you think that a 200 euro suit wouldn't give the same kind of fit? I disagree with that now. Oh, oh here, it, we go. here we go. Now. Lead into that Gloves microphone there. I think, <laughs> I think that you can get a nice fitted suit at the 200 mark. Uh, at for the, a groom. At the 200 price for a groom. Obviously, it, it is a slightly dearer suit, what you're offering, but you're giving a bit of value by giving it at the 200. Now, the, tr now the 300, 350 euro, uh, euro suit, is that a fitted suit, and or is it a different material, cloth, etc., than the 200 euro suit? It depends. Like, yeah, we can get a cheaper suit and you can get it fitted with a tailor and get, it, get that shape right. Okay. But how it drapes... And how it looks. There is a difference between it. Like, a, what's the difference between a Skoda and an Audi? Yeah. They're both cars. Yeah, they both get you from A to B. Right, but it's how you're going to look and how you feel about it. And, like, everybody is different. That's why mm. my point earlier on. Both cars are lovely, by the way. <laughs> Love Skodas. <laughs> Love Audis. <laughs> both cars are top notch. They're, they're not going to give you a car, mate. It's day in a man's <laughs> life. So, you both recommend, do you recommend that the grooms buy the suit for themselves? I, th I think that was the question. Yeah, I think so. It, yeah. It's, it's basically, I think, more along the lines of whether the groom should buy a suit compared to whether renting the suits for the groomsmen. So, do you recommend buying the suit? Does he get more benefit out of it? He does get more benefit. He probably yeah. gets more, more benefit out of it, yeah, definitely. So, he can always wear it to his next wedding. It all depends on, <coughs> on what value that you're offering, really. For it and yeah. budget when it comes down to it, right. it's easy for me to recommend it. But you have to you have to take into consideration different couples of different different budgets and things of that sort. It's kind of like obviously he is going to get more wear out of it and things like that, and it is going to turn out to be better value. But, but really. you you recommend? Buying I, it. I I think it's it's a wise move for the groom because the chances are the year you get married you're going to probably ask for at least two three more weddings. Mm. Yes, that's so the thing about have, it, isn't you it? You have a flash uh, suit. I remember a friend, the sad of, mine, thing is a friend if you're, of mine told me he was invited to nine weddings in uh, the space of 12 months. It's an affliction. You could have a travel around the world for that. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'd uh, groom to be 15 in the one year as well as his wedding. 
That's tough quite yeah. either. And they're all kind of friends. <laughs> Richard is over there going, sorry, 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 sorry. Have you another one for us, Richard? Uh, well, no, actually, that so question... That's less controversial, or have right. you a comment? The question is actually related to what you're just talking about there in regards to going to additional weddings, but um, we had Karen Nigaon, uh basically with a comment about, hi, guys, we were considering navy suits, but a friend who had been at a wedding recently suggested that a lot of the guests would be wearing navy, which would make it difficult for the groomsmen to stand out. Yeah. Would this be true? Yeah, I would, mm. I, I would agree with that, but... You're it the experts. Is. I, I, yeah. I would agree with the, There's so much navy and blue. I have said we had four years of navy and blue. Yeah. This is why grey is making an impact. Um, navy is, is fine. And if it suits the complexion and it, the groom is comfortable and he feels empowered, it's all about feeling up for the day. And if you feel comfortable in a navy suit, go with your navy suit. But uh, I'd be weary of going too strong a check. If you're Tom, if some people times the groom goes for um, a pattern suit, yeah. uh, the trending now is more detailed in the fabric, little small little detail in the fabric rather than checks. Now check, and the problem with a check is if if you wear a check, you can spot two guys with the same suit because the same check spot. You could two guys in a navy suit, nobody knows they're the same suit, right? Because navy is popular, but you need to do something in the bridal party to distinguish them from everybody else. Now we suggest. Possibly you might wear a wing collar shirt where you see the back of your tie coming along. And it just looks a little bit more uh, wedding looking for it. I would suit. have thought now that that was very 1980s. No. Well, it is. Ever since Brideshead revisited that sort of old I English. Somebody, English, well, English well, la- last, week, last week it was Downtown Abbey. Brideshead yeah. revisited it. I haven't seen either well, of it. It brought back the Victorian. The old days, the wing collar shirt is only a tiny little wing. Yes. The Victorian is a much bigger. It, to look at it straight on, it looks like a full collar. Right. But behind is cut off. Okay. But it makes you stand out. Now, the groom will stand out. But possibly he won't be wearing an ivory tie in any other right. time of his life, unless he's getting married a second time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An ivory or a white tie matching the, the bride. Um, I, I would do two, I always say two little things make you different from everybody else, else in the room. Right? You'd be wearing a buttonhole. You would, yeah. A buttonhole gives you that distinction. So maybe your shirt and your buttonhole, maybe your ties and your buttonhole, just to make you a cut above everybody else. Okay. Does it, what, what about you? You could wear your navy suits, but you could also change the waistcoats. Yeah, contrast them. Having uh, maybe the groom in a nice ivory waistcoat, but also often a nice silver waistcoat or something like that in the same material. Just a nice contrast. Okay. But that'll stand out from the rest of the... That, just as you mentioned waistcoats there, that brings me on to um, another question I had in relation to the waistcoats. Should... And we, we, we spoke about this earlier. <laughs> the, the, should the bottom button be closed or open on a gentleman's <laughs> waistcoat? And, and should the jacket be closed or open if he's wearing a waistcoat? I Desi. don't know if there's a right answer for this or not. If it's myself What's your answer, Desi? If myself personally, I'd button all the buttons right. and leave the jacket open. Leave the jacket open? Leave the Whether jacket open. Whether it's the same colour as the suit or not, leave it open? Leave it open. Because the reason you wear a waistcoat, I believe, is you want it to be shown off. You don't want it hidden by closing your jacket. No, I've seen men's suits where the jacket, the trousers and the waistcoat are the same material. Yeah. But, but you'd say leave it open I as well, even opened. then. Jared, what did you think? I, I think to show off the waistcoat is a good idea. Yeah. But I think uh, our, both our jobs, the jacket must be able to close. Like, I don't think we have a job done right unless you're able to close your jacket. For If the photographer says, close your jackets, lads, everybody should be closing their jackets. So okay. That's us doing our job right. Now, there's guys who are heavy, built like me. Yeah, and no more than myself. I think, now, we've gone through phases of ivory waistcoats, and it's kind of going a little bit old hat now. But I think if you wear an ivory waistcoat, it's only drawing attention to the tummy. Right, okay. So Col- Colour-wise, you mean, is it? Colour-wise. So the darker you can keep here... Never thought of it like that. ...less attention is drawn to the... Especially if, say, the groom is a heavy guy like me. Yeah. He needs to wear something that's not emphasising the stomach. Yeah. So your eyes should be trained away from the wider part. Right. So you should always make sure that the jacket closes because a suit that doesn't close on the heavy guy makes him look too small looking and makes him look yes. fatter. Yes, yes, so yes. Always make, it's the fitting and get, getting the shape right is right. most important. And if the groom decided to buy his suit, you definitely have to be able to close the jacket because mm-hmm. he might not always wear his waistcoat for other occasions when he's going to wear it again. So it's nice to be able to close it if he did decide to go two-piece. Cravats or ties, what's the, bow ties, cravats, ties, what's popular at the moment? 
Um, I think it should all blend in in together. It doesn't have to. The waistcoat doesn't have to match a bridesmaid's no, but, but, dress, but, but, but it from, blends from, in with the neckwear. Yeah, but the neckwear. What's popular at the moment? Uh, we're seeing from our own store is uh, skinny ties. Skinny ties. Skinny ties are getting very popular again. Again, it's, back to the 80s, stroke the 60s. It's not just a regular width tie anymore, it's skinny tie. Okay, Jared, would you agree with that? Uh, it's, their neck were, well, cravats are nearly a thing of the past. Right. So it's ties. Cravats are the... Uh, scrunched ruches. Scrunched. Yeah. They were popular for a while. We've and gone they, through the phase. You'd you know, often see... You know, and you'd see you'd see them at wedding, and and, and the lads have the, the waist goes over in the morning, down, yeah. and they're like, uh, "How do you put this on?" Or you know, uh, right. you know, a lot of them just tie at the back with a clip. Don't yeah, they? yeah, they yeah. already yeah. come ready made. But um, ties are, are part of the, uh, of the outfit and the ensemble. Basically, the groom's outfit is nearly looks as similar as if he was going to a wedding himself. So. Right. Um, but we always maintain you're going to your wedding, so you have to look that a little bit different. Right. So we do suggest that the groom should wear an ivory tie or a white tie, matching it with matching the dress. The, so, and the other lads match the bridesmaids. Well, maybe. that's right. where it can vary. Now, right. there's, there's what's trending now. Um, the old ivory waistcoats and colourful waistcoats, that's gone. Colourful waistcoats gone. gone. It, it's more... Colourful waistcoats are gone, guys. Gone. <laughs> Gerard Anthony. Well, <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's certainly it's been years since we've done them because right. it's, it's, it's moved on. We used but if you like them, that's okay too. There was a time you got <laughs> swirls and waistcoats and fleur de lis and every sort of yeah, yeah, zigzag yeah, on yeah. it. Um, it's gone to the old adage, you know, less is more. The less complicated you have it, the simpler it is, the more effective it is. Now, when it comes to ties, slim ties are very nice on some guys. It may suit the outfit and may not, but definitely not a slim tie on the fathers if they're in this. Okay, a, the older gentleman, the back older to gentleman the standard size tie. Standard size tie. Okay. It's like when we do tails, we suggest the right. If we generally do tails for weddings that are held in castles, like Kilrone and right, okay. or yeah. down the road here, but we suggest that um, the groom's party wears tails. But sometimes the fathers are not comfortable in tails, and we that we kept the same ensemble, but the fathers would wear a short jacket, okay, just to keep and the and same and colour theme running right. What knot then do you recommend? An ordinary tie yeah. knot, or do you go with the uh, what is the winds or not? Or well, part of our service is we would not let the tie out without the knot being in it. Mm. Okay. So because <laughs> there's so many winds you see with different knots and At different all the same, then. Once you yeah. have them all the same, they conform. Yeah. Okay. We generally put a double Windsor. Yeah. Double Windsor. Yeah. And make it nice triangular, yeah. tidy knot. That's for the, the the older gentlemen, is it, or for the for younger? all of them. All right, okay. Yeah, I didn't realize you, you want to get double Windsor on a single, on a thin. Yeah, yeah. you can do, yeah. yeah, yeah. I like it, yeah. I you want to get the, s- the symmetry right. What right. about the bow tie then? Bow tie are, they in, are they popular? Or do you, you know, do you like them yourselves? Or I, you see a lot of, I see a lot of lads your age, Desi, at weddings now with the bow tie. There's a lot of people going to weddings wearing, like as a guest, wearing the bow ties. The way I think a couple of months ago, it was very much. Um, they were more popular or maybe the groom might wear a bow tie and the groomsmen might wear the, the, and just a normal tie or a skinny tie for the groom for one way of standing out a bit. Right. But I think it's gone more so back to just a tie for that and maybe guests are wearing, wearing the dicky bows. Yeah, I think we went through a phase where it was a dicky bow craze mm. but uh, generally dicky bows are they're down now to Deb suits. Was that the Conor McGregor era? Yeah, he did influence. It. Like yeah. every, everything influenced. Something was on television influenced. Like the last royal wedding that was going on, that's going to influence. People are going to be looking for uh, traditional tails and, and striped trousers because of the profile. That'll come people. back for a while. So there's always phases, to, sorry, yeah. phases that change as people's outlook and how they should look. But... Uh, what the original question was, was the ties or uh, bow ties? I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bow ties. Bow ties. Uh, if it's a black tie wedding, I say black suit bow ties definitely. Mm. But uh, generally ties. Nice, mm. not you, a tie. You you brought it up there now. The black tie wedding. What is the the correct etiquette for who wears the black tie? Is it everybody? Is it just a bridal party? Uh, well. I, uh, well uh, um, I'm going to how do you find black tie weddings in general? Well, we see an upsurge in our, looking at, in our booking list forward that would be double up in black ties compared with this time last year. They, look, still, they look great in photos and fairness. Yeah, they're sharp. but not on pasty men. <laughs> not black on suit on a pasty guy does not look good. So you either. reckon, well, a navy or go get a tan? Spray well, tan. A bit of spray tan or <laughs> whatever. Um, Just to do a Ross on it. Black ties are definitely on the way back. Uh, and 
you, jackets that have a little bit of distinction, like a, a velvet dinner jacket or something like that, can look wow on a groom. I used to have a Just lovely a, velvet jacket back then. I had them two day. years ago. Yeah. No, it, no, it, no, it was a jacket Wine with public. silk. With a, with a, no, satin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's satin. With satin. Satin, satin lapel. Yeah. We're, we're hiring the same jacket This was back in, you know, Duran yeah. Duran days, back in the day. <laughs> I suppose so, would that be one way of maybe for the groom that's going black tie for him to stand out with the... Well, again, going back to what I said here, the bride calls the shots. If <laughs> the, the bridal party in a black tie is one thing, that's just having everybody in the groom's band party black. But uh, a black tie wedding is where everybody attending... Everybody wears black. Yeah. black, yeah. So um, it's, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Is it is it an is it an added expense Tis. on the guests? Do you think? But uh, can, but can, can, I mean you? I presume you can hire out black suits as well, and and, and you yeah, know, the bow ties and stuff. Yeah. Well, generally we we do a deal with a, with the wedding party. Right. If, if so, who's ever attended the wedding get a suit and a deal. Okay. The so w- when they say it's a black tie wedding, then is it black tie or black bow tie or both? Both, Both count. That Both meets count. the criteria. Black tie. The ladies don't have to wear black. No, at no, 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 no. Or I, I dare I say white. You know. Well, white is a no-no. But if you go by the British Bridal Association, yeah. What are do's and don'ts for weddings? The wedding etiquette. The rule wedding book etiquette. Or whatever, you know, yeah. uh, ladies should not attend a wedding wearing white or ivory. So that it's the bride's day, and she yeah. she should be the only one in white or uh, right. white and ivory. Now, and the English would always follow the suit with saying that ladies' dresses should not be above the knee. Yes, <laughs> but we're talking about men's wear. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. getting <laughs> off the track here. We're not going to get into women's wear. Girls, you can wear whatever you want. It looks lovely on you. We don't determine that. No, geez, no we, and we wouldn't dream to. Richard, talk to me. Um, I actually have one or two questions. I just, I've noticed in the, last, um, in the last year, a lot of the new wedding, or a lot of the new suits have this little... Um, little button on the um, on, on the, the lapel, lapel of yeah. the jacket mm-hmm. is that supposed to be there because a lot of people think it's just kind of uh, you know just marking the, the the suit as such or or is it supposed to be there Do you want to take that? Any ideas well it's 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 there for a reason that the the brand of suit is advertising yeah. Yeah. Lean, in, the lean into the mic there because but, I want to hear this as well um if it was me uh, for a wedding party if they were wearing a suit with it, with it on it I think I'd take it off it that that's like the the tag that you'd find on the sleeve of a suit. No, that's meant to be off. But I often wondered that. Yeah. You'd often see lads where the tag's still on. I I thought it was like you know a badge on a car or something. You know yeah. that's meant to be off, lads. Or so, worse, yeah. the holes that are left from yeah. pulling yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Which little is scissors by yeah. suit. Little scissors, little scissors. No, no. I, I think the pins are uh, they're a marketing ploy for each suit, so you can identify what brand of suit is. Hmm. But if you look at the real good suits, they don't actually employ that tactic of pulling them up there. Right. A good suit should look without having to put a badge on it to say it's a good suit. So, uh, everybody has like Herbie Frog is a, is a frog yeah. here. <coughs> Remus has a lion. Uh, Benetti have another is it a bee or what's the? It's a bee. It's, it's, a bee, it's just yeah. a marketing branding. To say yeah. cool. What what I've noticed since we started doing these shows has been on the night we do the show, depending on what category or what subject we're talking about, it gives you a new appreciation for the subject we're talking about. Last week we were talking about flowers and the different colours and the different styles and all the rest of it. This week we're talking about suits. And, and, and when, you're, when you're actually working at a wedding, you don't see any of that. You're there trying to get the shot. Richard, what about you? Would you agree with that? Um, that, that since we started doing these shows that we have a, a better appreciation for, the, for each of your skills and what you bring to the table? I, I, I think it's, 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 it's educating us more than, yeah. than people watching. But um, we find as well that, we'll say, every, every guest that we have on the show, um, there's a lot of questions we have to ask ourselves. And it'd be simple things that we've never thought of, and it just comes up during the show that we think of it. And that's the idea of the comments as well, is that if you have any questions or any, any, anything that pops into your head about menswear, you know, now it's time to ask it. Yeah, yeah. Anything else there at the moment? Um, just a lot of few shout-outs and stuff like that. Um, a few questions that were asked. I think you've covered them already. Julie Kilcauley was saying about does the etiquette of morning suits can only be worn between certain times still stand? Uh, well, generally a morning suit... Uh, 
the idea of a morning suit is that's the first your suit that you wear in the morning and mm. just as you call your first meal the morning breakfast as the breakfast mm. even though you might be having it at six o'clock in the evening it, yeah it used to be called the wedding breakfast wasn't yeah, it yeah. but the weddings was, were weddings <laughs> yeah. were over at seven o'clock no yeah. you could wear morning suits for morning suits what 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 is a morning suit a morning suit is tails and possibly a striped trousers like what you were describing at the royal wedding yes or not the royal wedding pair what Pippa Middleton yes. wedding yeah, yeah that, that, they generally Semi-royal. wear double breasts it's a classic English look there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely. Mm. It's, it's very smart. If you were going to Ascot, you'd wear a morning suit. And the Ascot goes on in the afternoon. Do you wear so. a top hat? Uh, for Ascot, you're required. Really? Mm-hmm. What about a wedding? Are no. top hats popular anymore? Old hat. Old hat. <laughs> old Desi, hat. what do you reckon? Mm, old. No. Old hat. What if a groom comes in, I want a top hat? Wait, if he really wants it, we can give him one. But it's generally for photos. But do you not find that some of them might find them just for photos that have them but really I've had, them. yeah I've had one or two grooms yeah. but generally it, it's lost by the time we get to the family or if photos. the, yeah. or if the yeah. groom yeah. is involved in horses or something like that you might have a cane mm. or, a, yeah. or a top hat like that yeah yeah Richard um, uh, another question that I had was in regards to uh, winter weddings and stuff like that I've noticed in the last few winters that the change of navy suits to kind of burgundy suits and so on like is there a trend for for wedding suits for the winter season not particularly. It's it's generally winter weddings tend to take more autumnal colours. Mm. Uh, you you rarely see bridesmaids of bright pink in the middle of November. You'd see mm. richer colours like wines, tops, uh, teals, uh, more earthly colours. Mm. Uh, the men generally follow suit with the colour in their neckwear. So, it, like navy is still navy, uh, and most of our jackets are lightweight. Even though we have winter weddings, we're all wedding that are held in churches, which is quite yeah, warm enough, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, the weight of the jacket wouldn't be an issue colours for men not particularly for ladies yes for bridesmaids it wouldn't be an issue hmm. yeah very good what do you think yeah I, I agree yeah. I agree I'm, I don't mean to be not adding any more to it but yeah hit the nail on the head really with it Desi can I ask you what other services do you provide other than um, wedding um, attire and stuff do you look do, do, do you get uh, guests or male guests coming in looking for their oh but do you cater for page boys you know teenagers that type of stuff in your shops as well oh we do like the guests of the wedding the, the, the people that are invited to the wedding oh we do yeah we cater for all that um, we do ask actually if it's a wedding that they're going to generally the if the people are getting if the bridal party is getting the suits from us they might recommend us to a guest you know that was thinking of getting the suit so we'd ask them if there's somebody so not to have them all in the same suits if they did uh, if they did go down the route of buying it right so, uh, so we w- do w- care for all that as well yeah and would you recommend then that a, 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 a man going to a wedding wears a suit yes i think it looks sharp uh, some men don't feel comfortable in them but uh, generally i just think a suit looks very smart with a tie or without a tie? I think it was about two years ago they were very popular, you know, the shirts with the double collars and a bit of detail going through them and all that. There was a lot of men that tried to get away with wearing them to a wedding yeah. and all that, but they were told, no, ties, ties. had to be Jared, worn. would you... You'd be a tie man, I'd say, would you? No, I would... The convention would say that you should wear a suit to a wedding. Right. Uh, by not doing so would be... And maybe an insult to the bride and groom because right. it's a formal occasion, so it requires formal dress. Yes. That said, loads of casual weddings, so loads of informal, the relaxed people. You know the personality of the person, the bride and groom? Yeah. They will reflect how formal and how stuffy they want it and how more relaxed they want it. Right. So if you want to go on an open shirt and you know them very well, you think they'd be happy with that, that's your scene. Go with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Talk to me a moment about page boys and, you know, young lads carrying up the. You know, here come the bride signs and stuff. What's what's the procedure there? You'd often see you could you couldn't put a young fella into a jacket, can you? Or can you? It all depends on the age and size. Just lean in there, does it? Sorry, it all depends on the age and the size, I suppose, wouldn't it be, Jared? Yeah, a uh, two-year-old would be the, the cut-off threshold Anthony for a would, jacket. Yeah, right. Like uh, uh, hiring kids suits is one thing. It's lovely to see a miniature of the groom at a two-year-old, three-year-old, and everybody goes, ah, it's lovely. Yeah. But those two-year-old and three-year-old, you ever see them in the wedding, they're up and down the floor, and the knees are gone in the trousers. And nearly every second wedding was right off of trousers. Yeah, you so you, see, some of, you see some of the groomsmen as well doing that, George. <laughs> <No, laughs> the higher of this uh, suit, a kid's suit, it's, it's expensive enough. 
Right. We would suggest to the, if say if you're going to Navy in the party, that you go to some of the department stores, you get a, a suit shirt tie for fi, for 50, 50 euros. So, so you're it's far really cheaper than hiring. In, in the pennies or dons yeah. or, or... No, so not pennies. I'm talking about, uh, say, Next or... All oh, right, okay. Or, or Marks and Spencers or something like that. Now, we could always supply a waistcoat that matches the whole ensemble right. for the day, and that's fine. That's easy enough to do it. Um, but you don't want to take the thunder away from the bride. It's the bride's day. I first. don't think anything any, anything will take the thunder away from the bride now. <laughs> Desi, what about braces? Are braces popular? Suspenders, as they're called? Or? Not as. Uh, the, I think the wear for guests going to wedding maybe about two years ago as well, but not anymore. I notice a lot of wearing tie pins now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that, that 60s look was more a two piece suit and yes. the, the narrow tie. Mm. You'd wear a tie bar. If you're wearing a waistcoat, you can't really see your tie bar. That's true. So, on a two piece suit, yes, tie bar is brilliant. Right. But you plus, can it, get plus, it stops it, your tie from going into your soup. But you can get narrow <laughs> and wider tie bars. Oh, yeah. You would be able to wear it up that bit. Oh, it's not the width of the tie. It's, I'm talking about the proportion. Oh, I bit. understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, like you wouldn't put a waistcoat here and then put a tie bar up there. It's, no. it's, it's, it's a piece of jewellery as well. Talk to me yeah. about, talk to me about yeah, yeah, lads having a conversation there about it. Yeah, there, uh, there's, all different, there's all different types of waistcoats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk to me about jewellery for um, a man on the day of his wedding or the groom's man. I mean, you, like you said, you, you, you have the tie bar. The cufflinks are important, aren't they? Do you want to take Does that every groom no. wear t- cufflinks? Uh, we would, all our shirts going out would be double cuff shirts. Right. So that requires cufflinks. And it, there is an opportunity when, she, when the groom is putting the, his uh, ring on her finger of the, sh- the shot from the camera with yeah, the, the cufflinks showing. That's uh, one piece of jewellery. The it, ring, of course. Yeah. We also, a pocket watch is an option that we give. It's a little bit old. The, the pocket, a, pocket the, watch is making a lovely gift for the dads, I think. Oh, no, the pocket watch is never going to be used. It's only a, a no, but, but but as a memento for the dads with an engraving as a present. How for them. many dads are going to go around with a pocket watch? No, I but I'm talking about as as a gift, as a as a memento. No, they never use it. What would they you recommend? Use. What would you recommend? A pocket watch is good for. Oh my God, she's late, and you set the you <laughs> set the time at 15 minutes past the time, and the camera gets it. And, you know, as, as a gift, so for the dads, what would you recommend? Dads, huh. a lot of people use, you know, when it comes to matching shoes with outfits. Right. Some people use to the, the, the buy the shoes for the grooms. I, I was just going to come to that, actually. Yeah. The, the, the and whole that shoe. acts as the gift. Right, okay. Um, some people use, you know, cufflings for as gifts, but I think more practical. What about the, what about the pocket, the old hip flask? <laughs> <laughs> that could be practical. I've seen I think the shoes would be that bit more practical. We, 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 it's amazing what you see when suits are returned. Sometimes we do get hip flasks back in right. and you, engraved, especially on the day. And you say to yourself, well, he really thought a lot of his gift if he just left it after him and didn't bother looking after ah, it. Ah, no, no, I don't. No, 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 no. <laughs> Richard, talk to me. Uh, well, I, I'd actually disagree with you on the pocket watch thing. Uh, I had a lovely groom uh, last year, and he had a lovely pocket watch that was handed down by his grandfather, who had right. passed away. Um, and a lovely photograph engraved. They got it engraved and everything for him. But he also had a little photo. Um, you know the way we say the bride's zombie have a photo on their, yep. on their bouquet? Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, he had one like that, but it was pinned on the inside of his jacket. That's nice. So a lovely shot. Basically, he opened up the jacket and he had the pocket watch in his hand and he had the photo. All brides and grooms want to make their day special. And small little things like that makes the difference. Not big, colourful this and colourful that. It's the little it's personal touches. It's the small touch, personal touches yeah. that make all the difference. That make the difference, I think. Would you, does it? Yeah, mean? yeah, definitely. Everyone is different, so there's all different ways of making that bit more special. Correct me if I'm wrong. Shoe colour in relation to suits. You can wear a black shoe with a black suit but you can't wear a black shoe with a navy suit it's or a blue suit am i wrong or what color suit goes be- or what color shoe goes best and let you take that please. Uh, what goes best uh, I-, I think you i think you can okay but so long as you have the belt matching all oh, right yeah no because a belt it might need a belt but it's like an accessory if you're wearing brown shoes you wear a brown belt if you're wearing a kind of an oxblood burgundy color shoe you wear the same colour in the belt. Right. I also, the same with black shoe, black belt. It just blends it all in. I think that you can wear it with it, yes. And um, what about black shoes, white socks? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not, not unless, not unless no. you're, you're... Stripey you're, socks, okay, you're, but You're a member of a, of, a, of a scab band. <laughs> Jared, talk to me about shoes. 
Uh, well, my opinion is that we've gone through phases of tan shoes. Right. Like four years of blue suits, four years of tan shoes. And they work. And they really do work with tan shoe with navy. Uh, I personally am tired of them. Okay. Now, there is a swing towards a darker brown, like a cognac color. There's also a swing towards navy shoes for navy suits or burgundy shoes, depending on the next wear. Yeah. There is, you know, there's colors available. There's a whole lot of choice that wasn't there years ago. There used to be only black shoes or brown. Yeah. Now it's black, tan, different now shoes. Now, any couple out there at the moment that have organized their wedding, and we don't, we, we're not insulting you. If, if you've organized your wedding 18 months ago or 10 months ago, and you, your groom was wearing a lovely gun barrel blue suit or whatever you said it was, um, <laughs> and he's wearing tan shoes, that's okay. We're talking future. We're talking in the next 18 months. Going forward, uh, like the trend is beginning to change. Is that what you're saying? Uh, when, it, when it comes to the groom buying a suit, there is yeah, there's this definite change towards micro detail on the fabric. Right. Uh, little distinctions on the cloths to make them look that little bit sharper. Uh, loud gearish tartans, they're there on the younger guys, but they're not really right. there on the mature. You guys. you mentioned something earlier on about socks to me, and I thought it was it was very interesting about. The whole novelty socks. Right. There's a, there is a tendency to uh, happy socks and a few other novelty socks, people putting all these colours on. And they're fine. They, how they had originated was from, in the German and the continental French market, they wear their suits length about two and a half inches shorter than what an Irish guy would wear. Right. Socks become part of the fashion. Okay. Here we don't, we wear our socks down to our shoes, or sorry, our trousers down to our shoes, so socks aren't an issue. Right, you'll see your socks when you're kneeling at the altar from behind. I would say, you know, you go wear a navy sock with a navy suit, black with a grey, you know, right. match tone on tone. Desi, would you agree or would you disagree? I agree. Would you agree? Yeah, I was agree. expecting you to disagree. No, no. I was, I was expecting you to disagree. Only once tonight, only once I was tonight. expecting you to disagree. It would make a better show maybe to disagree, but no, it's, uh, I think just matching tone on tone is better, definitely the way to go. All right, okay. George, uh, I didn't answer, though I'm going to ask a question about the black on navy. Do you think with that... I think you can get away with a black yeah. shoe with a navy suit. Yeah. You can. The advantage, there's a cost issue here. If you say to the groomsmen, black shoes, lads, they all have black shoes, mm, and yeah. a black shoe is a black shoe is a black shoe. Yeah. If you say to them, tan shoes, now that's an issue where there's a cost involved. But, but you were saying it makes a nice gift, then, if, if the if groom you, buys their shoes. Oh, plus, yeah. plus, it... it, it they're, they're all matching then? Yes. The, the, what you don't want to see is when you look at that, back at that wedding photo 10 years back and you see all the lads in tan shoes and one guy is in a yellow pair of shoes. Yeah, so yeah. his definition of tan is different from everybody else. Mm. And, and of course, so get the, only the shoes three weeks thing. beforehand and yeah. break them in, obviously. Uh, yes, that's more, that's, that, you don't want to remember the wedding with the bad shoes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, no, yeah. but definitely getting the colour tones right, that's okay. a huge issue. To add any any final tips while Richard is picking a, a couple of winners for us, what do you think? Jared, I go to you first. Well, I, I would say um, trust the guy you're dealing with, right? Because he has the knowledge, or she has the knowledge, of doing this with numerous bridal parties before. <coughs> He's there to dispel information. Listen to it wisely. You don't have to take everything on board. Usually, we would advise rather than enforce yeah. <coughs> ideas on people. But they have knowledge from thirty years in the business. You will you would certainly know your stuff. So yeah. we're not just to be there behind the counter for, we know our stuff. Trust the shop. That, I always found that whenever I went into a, a menswear to buy a suit or a shirt or a whatever, that the lads who are working there, they do know, know their stuff. Yeah. Desi, give us a words of wisdom. I don't really know how much to, I can add to that. Uh, George, is, again, has said it perfect. Trust, trust the person, uh, that, trust you're the person that you're dealing with. All Definitely, right. yeah. And contact you guys how far in advance again, roughly? It can vary, depends on the circumstances. But right. you know, you're okay with a wedding. I, <laughs> I've done a wedding with a week's notice. Right, okay. But I, I, the average wedding booking is six to eight weeks beforehand. Okay. If it's in Australia or different, we can do a year ahead. Okay. You know, okay. Just, okay. There's no problem. Ideally, for the shopkeeper, I'd be thinking the eight weeks, but yeah. you can work with it lesser time. All right. Well done. Days. Well done. Excellent. Yeah. So I suppose, guys, uh, just mentioned to remember as well, if you want to leave any comments or any questions as well, please leave the comments uh, in, the com in the comment section below. And we, we can, we'll stay online for about a half hour afterwards. So if you have any questions that uh, you wanted to ask the guys, please do so below. Also remember that the show will um, repeat 
after it's gone live, once we finish, it'll play again, so you'll be able to watch it back if you need to. We also have um, a version that will go out on YouTube, um, hopefully tomorrow or the day after, and you'll be able to watch the whole thing again. Before we go to next week, I want to say thank you to the two lads for coming along. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant with the words of you know it was it was it was fascinating listening to listening to you go on and some of the things I kind of knew and you know you dispelled some of the rumors that I had rolling around in my head so thank you both very much uh, much much appreciated remember like Richard said if you do have any questions for the lads leave them in the comment section below or contact them via their Facebook um, phone email we'll have the the description in the comments section below as well now. Next week, we have the big one. The big one is on next week. Next week, we're going to be covering video, the one that, <laughs> the one that I'm most interested in. Um, so on the show, we're going to be joined by Caroline Clancy from Pink Line Video, Michael Frayne from Frayne Videography, myself from The Video Guys, and Richard will be hosting next week. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So make sure you tune in. If you do have any questions in relation to video, please get them in and we will uh, try and answer them on the show. Thanks again for watching. If you missed earlier shows, they're all online on our YouTube channel. Search My Wedding Store. There's a playlist set up there so you can watch the episodes back to back if you want. After you finish watching Game of Thrones or House of Cards, you can watch the wedding show back. You can binge watch on the wedding show. Uh, you can click down below for previous episodes. Please do subscribe and you'll be notified each time an episode or re relevant wedding related clips are uploaded. The pizza has arrived. So again, we hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you find it beneficial. And again, feedback welcome. So please, please do let us know how you think we're getting on. But please be gentle. Thanks to Richard. Thanks to Brian. Thanks to the two lads. Thanks, Until Rick. next week, half a state. Good night from all of us here. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Night. Nice.